Oh, of course, we knew this just had to be in Game 7. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Zachary Nolan. Carter Nolan is behind the camera. I am here. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Goal or No Goal. So if any of you are new here, I cover s pretty much most goals that get challenged in the NHL. I, I try to get to them. Or if it's a controversial challenge to be controversial. exact. Controversial. I will go back and I will break down my thoughts on it and I'll review it. And I will try to be more consistent than the NHL is because the NHL is... A crazy place. Now let's go to a very unique one. Not anything that happened to do with the goaltender or the puck going out of play or the puck being lost or the net coming off. Nope, it's just a regular interference penalty. Or is it? Let's go into it. Sorelli right now is chasing a John Tavares. Right now is here is Steven Stamkos. And Justin Hall. Let's go through this play right here. Now, Tavares is trying to go up the ice and just trying to cut around to the middle of the ice to get a shot on Vasilevsky. We know this because that's what he ends up doing. But what happens is Justin Hall at first looks like he tries, he opens himself up for a pass. He then instead takes it, stops up right there. Sorelli keeps approaching Tavares there, who's who just kind of like skates around. Almost like a little bit of a pick play. And Tavares skates around him. Hall bumps into Sorelli. Whoever is here realizes they are in trouble. Tavares walks out, fires, and scores to make it 1-1. Immediately, this goal was waved off. And apparently, there was a whistle we couldn't hear, which was indicated because there was a penalty to Justin Hall for interference. Oh boy. So let's take another look at it here. Uh, and to be quite fair, Hollis keeps his head up. He's, he sees him coming in. Yep, he stops up right there. Sorelli runs into him. Stamkos immediately realizes this and actually wants a penalty call. Worth noting. So, well, is it right? Lee's fans, like, did this cost you the game? So, I'm going to give you an answer here, and I'm not sure a lot of people will agree with me, but I'll say it anyway. I'm a Jets fan, so I take an, obs a, a, an odd amount of enjoyment in the fact that you lost in the first round. I'll be honest. I, I, I do. I do also feel bad at the same time, but I can't deny that after such a rivalry we had this year, seeing you then go out and do the exact same thing you've done years prior is kind of funny. That being said, I actually think that this is kind of a bit ridiculous. Like, look at this. Like, yes, is it a pick play? But it's more of a pick play on Tavares' part. Hall isn't the main one using, using the pieces. Hall doesn't take a single stride from about, about this point of the circle to the point of contact. There is no extra movement by Hall. All he does is he keeps gliding. Tavares, being the smart veteran that he is, takes mo does the job himself to pretty much drag it over. It's like, have you ever played Mario as a kid? You know when Mario when Mario gets chased by those bullet bills and he has to drag them into the, those? That's like, this is exactly like that. Mario references, we are a cultured bunch. Yep, see, he drags them over. Whatever you want to sound that is, that was in Mario Galaxy. And like... I think Justin Hall knows what's happening, but at no point can you say Justin Hall just went out of his way to make contact with Sorelli. He, he skates there and Sorelli just runs into him. And also, let's establish something here. Pick plays happen all the time. You know how we know that? Every time the puck gets dumped in and as players, as the forwards going towards it at full speed, if he doesn't make it there, nine out of ten times there was a pick play on it. 
That doesn't get called. There are pick plays all the time in the high slot where you're trying to shake off defenders, and that's how you work around and cycle it around. Honestly, end of the day, I think this is a goal. I, I don't think this is an interference penalty. In game seven, I don't think you saw it. However, if you're asking me, do, did the, were the Leafs robbed? I don't want to say yes, but did this... Would they have won otherwise? You can't prove that. You can't. Now, granted, with revisionist history, we know that you're all, that the Leafs' odds would have improved from a certified 0% chance of winning that game, which happened, to a hypothetical chance of winning, um, because now Morgan, Morgan Riley doesn't get the puck on, off that face-off because that face-off doesn't exist anymore because you have a center ice face-off. So you know how it all kind of butterfly effects the other way. But I will say this. Leafs fans, this is a tough pill to swallow for you. I hope my breakdown of the situation, I don't want to say necessarily made you feel better because we kind of admitted what you guys thought of it. But I hope kind of was a little therapeutic, I guess. You got some maybe gave you some justification maybe you're showing it to your friends that said that you were crazy maybe you're showing it to your friends that were upset about the game and wish something different had happened i don't know but nonetheless thank you so much for watching don't forget to leave a like subscribe check out the stream later when we stream dallas versus calgary thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time Connor, you'll the top for Connor and Pierre Luc.